Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about loaded brush blending. Uh, so this is a uh, fairly popular style of blending that was popularized originally by uh, Ben Kometz and it's something that's very useful. Um, I certainly use it quite often. Um, it's great for things like doing uh, non-metallic metal which I want to do on this axe here. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I go about doing it from sort of stem to stern and hopefully it will uh, help you out. I think a lot of people are scared by this concept because it is one of the tougher sort of blending styles to master, but once you kind of get the basics down, you'll find that you can do it really easily and you can achieve some pretty great things with it. Um, to me, this is the complement to the video I did a few weeks ago about glazing. Because what I'll often do is I start with like a loaded brush or a, a wet blend or something like that and then I go to glazing. So blends aren't meant to be done just like one style, like oh I only wet blend or something like that. No, that's nonsense. You use all of the tools in your tool toolbox. So that's like saying well I never use hammers, I only use screwdrivers. Okay, well that's going to be a real problem if you happen to have uh, a nail. Um, so. Let's put this to the side for a moment. And let's slide our palette over here. <clears throat> okay. So, you can see I've got some white and some black. Uh, which is all I'm going to do. These are war colors, uh, white and black, which is what I generally use for the base of my steel non-metallic metal. Um, you can also blend some blue in there and such. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, we'll do that actually at the end for this piece. Um, Non-metallic metal, especially steel, shouldn't be just white and black. You should have color in there. But in this case, I want my base to be just white and black. So I get a little water on my brush from my cup. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the white and I'm just going to spread it out like this. Nice and thin, just rotating the brush as I go down. Okay. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black. This is going to be tough to do at this angle because normally I'd turn it around. Um, and I'm going to just spread it out in the same way but in the opposite direction. And then back. And then forth. And back. And forth. Back. And to the left, back, and to the left. Okay? I'm going to wipe the brush off here. Then I'm going to look where my little gradient I made isn't quite as, uh, isn't quite as solid. Need a little more true white area up here. So I'm going to kind of blend that down. And just get that nice and smooth. Deepen my low gradient over here a little bit. I'm kind of pushing it down as I'm doing this so that it's actually in the, uh, so it's actually in, pushing it into the wet palette. So that way it's absorbing some of that water. And you can see now I've got a real nice gradient from my white up to my black. Okay. So now that I've got that to work from, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to put a little bit of flow aid on my palette. So this is just Liquitex Flow Aid. It's over here on my palette. Don't worry, and I'll show you how I'm going to load up the brush. So let's bring this back in. Let me see if we can focus a little better on the brush there, or on the palette there. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm going to use a fairly sharp brush. So this is the brush I'm going to use for this. Okay. And uh, I want a brush with a fairly decent tip because... What I'm going to do here needs to be relatively precise when we get to the, the loaded part, i.e. the white dot on top. You can load a brush in any direction. You can go from dark to light or light to dark. 
I tend to find that going from dark to light works better. Own personal taste. And this is that's why it makes a good compliment to glazing, because if you remember the glazing video, uh, the uh, glazing works best with dark colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a fair amount of water on my brush, and I'm going to go over here into my like pure black. Okay. Just mix that in, a little bit of water. I want it to be pretty darn runny. Not glaze thin, but you know, thin. Then, very important step, I'm gonna come over here on my paper towel, and I'm gonna wick off the excess from the tip. Okay? So I still got a bunch of black paint in my brush, but the excess has been wicked off. Now, I'm gonna go into my white, and I'm just gonna get a little dab like that. Let's see if we can bring that into focus. See that little dab of white? There you go. See that tiny little dab of white? That's how much I want. Okay. Now, axe. Let's focus in on our axe here. Okay, great. So we want to start, you'll notice the zenithal is already going to lead us where we want to go. So I'm going to turn her around because this part right here is going to be the white. So what I'm going to do is just very carefully take my white along there and with the brush holding it sideways to start dragging it back and forth till I get up to the dark. Okay. Now if your white goes a little uneven like mine just did, that's okay. That's no problem, because we're just going to get another little dab of white, and we're going to go right back in there, and we're just going to do it again, okay? And so what we get is a nice, smooth gradient between the two, okay? And we can keep doing it to reinforce it. Oop, a little too much white. If we get a little extra white, we just dab it off on our hand. And then we're just going to go ahead and go right in it again. And we want the black nice and wet because as we push down and go back and forth, it's going to draw it up into the brush. And then what I can do is I can just void it a little and just smooth it out just like that. And I get a nice easy gradient without much work at all. Let's get that out of the light, it's not reflecting. We're gonna do that one more time. So, let's get the brush nice and clean. Let's go back into our black. Again, we want a nice runny black, all right? And then we're gonna dab that off on the paper towel. Get a nice white dot on our sharp tip. And then let's do this top part up here. Let's do this part. So we're gonna go ahead and go white. And we're just gonna lightly put pressure on the brush so we get that white and black just mixing real nice. And then one more time, we're just gonna get another little dab of white. And if it's not bleeding off fast enough, we can run it along our hand and accelerate the mixture. Okay. So then we get our second gradient, just like that. Should we do one more? I think we should do at least one more. This time I'm not gonna wipe the brush. I'm just gonna go right back in because I've pretty much gotten rid of the white and now, let's go and get the, let's start from the tip. This is a nice small area here. So we want just a little bit of white. And the harder I push on the brush as I go back and forth, the more I will force the black down in there. And the more the color will bleed faster. Okay? I push a little too hard because I got rid of most of my white. Let's do that again. 
So we start light, and then we push harder for dark. Push light, and then we just push a little harder and get it nice and dark. There we go. Now, what that does is give me a nice basic gradient to work with. <clears throat> I can then go into that same black I had before, thin it down into a little bit of a glaze, and build that up. Oh, thinned it a little too much. Not that much. There we go. Then I can void it out. And if my paint's a little wet, it'll mix right in. And now what I have is a really nice, solid gradient from a bright white to a dark just that quick, right? It's not about getting the perfect blend out of your loaded brush. It's about getting a solid blend that you can work from, right? Like if you look at this, I have a nice track from white to very dark, and it didn't really require more than a few seconds to do, right? So let's flip the axe over and we'll do the other side and we'll show it again. All right, how are we gonna hold this girl so you can actually see what the heck I'm doing? How about that? That'll work. The key with it is you want a heavy amount of the watery sort of dark color you're trying to mix into. You want it to be flowing pretty well, and that's why we've got the flow aid, because I put a drop of the flow aid into my mix, and that flow aid is gonna be coming up with the darker color, okay? But because the white has no flow aid in it, it will remain relatively static. You want an actual fairly thick paint for your your brighter color, your tip color, your loaded color. So. And there you go. You can see again, we got a nice gradient from white all the way up to black with basically no effort. That took just a few seconds. Let's just do it again. Let's do it again right on the top, right up here. There you go. You notice how at the end, I can actually lean the brush back and lean into the dark paint. Because remember, I still have a bunch of dark paint down here in the tip, or sorry, down here in the belly. So if I lean my brush back, what'll hit this back part then is the darkest paint. And as I draw it up, it will naturally blend it out. Okay. So you can see how pretty quickly I can do a whole set of blends on this axe to get it going and establish my basic gradients with really very little effort overall. Right? Maybe I need a glaze or two to kind of smooth everything out. But for the most part, what I get is a nice set of my initial blend sketches without too much extra work for it. So what I then like to do is from this point, it's just a matter of smoothing it out. And that's why I made this gradient over here in the paint to begin with. Because what I can do is if I see a part that needs some touch up, I can match where I am here on the axe to this area here to kind of build a little of that in. So like on this middle section, if I see, okay, maybe my dark isn't quite dark enough here. All right, we'll go into kind of this middle dark gray, smooth it out. So we get a nice watery glaze of that. And then we'll kind of draw that towards the dark spot and void it out and draw it down. All right, or if I see that maybe here 
I need a little bit of the lighter color. Okay, I'm gonna go into my lighter color, get it nice and thin. And I'll just kind of smooth that down along the edge of the axe. Right. So the key is, is that if there, if my, because your loaded brush is never going to be perfect. Okay. It's not about a perfection technique on a single blend. It's not sorcery. You're, you're, I'm mixing from literally dark black to bright white here. It's never going to be a hundred percent smooth just because of a trick of paint. Right. But it gives me a great base to work from to make sure that if I want to, I can come in here with relatively little effort, a few thin glazes, and get it nice and cleaned up. So I get a nice smooth transition. If I need to build up my edge a little more strongly, one of the most common things that'll happen is you won't have an incredibly bright edge. So what I'll often come in and do is take some white, and just white alone. And come in there and really reinforce my edge. Just very carefully. And then maybe just do a little void blending on that to smooth it out a little bit. All right. Again, so we get that nice gradient there. Just like that. Easy peasy. So. That's Loaded Brush. Like I said, it's not actually that super complicated or sneaky or tricky. It's just a thing you need to practice. The more you do it over time, the smaller the space you can do it on. A shorter brush, sharper brush will let you do smaller spaces. If you're doing a big flat space, like let's say I was trying to do it on this cloak and go all the way from here up to here, I would want a much bigger brush with a much bigger belly. You still want to keep a relatively sharp tip uh, don't be afraid to go back over your loaded brush blend twice. Um, so as to say, once I establish it once and the paint's still wet, I can go right back to another tip of my light loaded color and just bring it right down again. Once I've got it in there and I've got my gradient established, I can reinforce that gradient with some thin glazes or some very careful applications of paint. Just very nicely, carefully along the edge here. So for example, if I wanna sharpen up this white line, That way I really build in that high contrast and get that full run, okay? So, again, make sure your darker paint, or let's say the paint that's going to fill the brush, make sure that I usually go dark and have a tip of light, so that's why I think like that. But make sure that color, little drop of flow aid, if you don't have flow aid, a little drop of medium, like a glazed medium or a thinner medium can also help. Um, get that nice and thin, get that flowing in the brush, wick off the excess from the tip. You don't want a big watery brush. Super, 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 super duper important. Let me say it again, wick off the tip. You can see, this is what my paper towel looks like after doing that, where I wicked off all that extra paint. Because if your brush is totally full of liquid, you're not gonna be able to actually then get the paint mixing properly. Then a tiny dab of your extra color, touch to the area you want, and the more pressure you apply, short back and forth strokes over your area, always at a side angle, like I'm doing here, the more pressure I apply, the more I will force the, the loaded color into the tip color, okay? So a light touch will give you a longer time with your bright color. If you push down hard, you mix faster, okay? So you wanna kind of vary, and then push harder as you get to here. And if you're on an edge, you can always just roll to the back of the brush or the side of the brush and actually pull out that dark color. But there you go. That's loaded brush blending. I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you liked it, hey, give it a like. That's always appreciated. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. If you've got a hobby cheating request of something you'd like to see me cover, go ahead and drop that in the comments. I always like viewer suggestions. Always happy to help. And uh, of course, share this with somebody if you think it would help them out. That's always the nicest thing you can do and deeply appreciated. But as always, I appreciate you watching this and we'll see you next time.